<clears throat> okay, it's Saturday afternoon, June the 22nd, 2013. Um, it is officially summer. Um, longest day of the year, supposedly was uh, yesterday. Summer solstice and the super moon should be arriving tonight for those with telescopes or good binoculars. Uh, the moon is closest to the earth so it looks bigger thus the name super moon. Um, the, uh, it's funny how the first day of summer happens to be the longest day of the year. You would think that the middle of summer would be but no it doesn't work that way. Um, Welcome to Progressive Discussions. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, a hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I will formally pipe aboard my co host and mentor for the show, aboard our progressive liberal starship. Arr, ahoy, matey. Welcome aboard, uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, the very founder of Newsletter Censored in uh, 1977, and uh, the new issue is out. How are you feeling this week, sir? Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, the new issue of Censored is out, and um, get it while it's hot off the griddle. Um, Okay, I want to go over a couple things here. Uh, oh, um, do you get do you get this in the mail, Micro Center? Okay, I'll throw it away. Um, <clears throat> I went over this once before. Now, don't get me wrong. We'll do a little Chisler's Hall of Shame. I don't have really much to talk about this week for Chisler's Hall of Shame, but. Uh, I love this buffet, don't get me wrong. For the money, it's great quality. But the coupons that they give out, okay, a dollar off the lunch and dollar fifty off the dinner, in fine print, it only applies to people who buy a beverage, iced uh -huh. tea, soda. So in, in, in reality, you're not getting a dollar off the lunch buffet itself. You're getting a free drink. Now, with myself, I like ice water with fresh lemon or lime. So the soda and the iced tea doesn't apply to me. So I am, it doesn't pay for me to use the coupon, but the point is, if it was a fair coupon, it would be a dollar off the lunch buffet, period. Not, you have to buy a, a, a beverage. So for those that do get soda and iced tea, they're getting a free drink. So it, it, in, in reality, it's not a true discounted coupon off the meal. All right, there's a catch to it. So that's it. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with the place, with the establishment, with the food. I just have a problem with uh, the uh, misleading coupon. But it's nothing new. In uh, business, especially retail advertisements. How about the bars with uh, drinks oh. and the peanuts, free peanuts. Oh boy, the bars! Yeah, bars have been putting out salty snacks uh, uh, for ages to, to make you more thirsty. But today, drinks are expensive. You know, uh, a simple screwdriver might set you back six dollars mm. uh, in New Jersey, maybe eight dollars in New York City, mm. uh, and and they're not. They've been caught. They're not using a full ounce and a half, otherwise known as a jigger, of hard liquor like they're supposed to. Put a shot of liquor in your drink. They, they've been using not only watered down booze, but they have been se sneakily selling cheap liquor as top shelf liquor. And they were caught doing it like uh, TGI Fridays was caught. Mm -hmm. But an investigation is going on throughout the bar industry. so. Uh, uh, it doesn't surprise me because the people that run bars and work in bars and bartenders, it's like waitresses working the graveyard shift. It doesn't exactly attract the most uh, uh, functional, stable, normal 
Sunday go to meeting uh, people. You know, they're <laughs> uh, some say cops are a little, you know, um, a, a little. Uh, they have issues. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, yes, I have met these waitresses before in, in uh, late night diners, and they have lots of issues. And so do people that work in bars. So the fact that they're doing underhanded things like this doesn't surprise me. You know, I was just trying to look for the right words uh, instead of just using dysfunctional. Um, well, you know what I mean. You could tell when somebody has issues. Some have a little bit, some have a lot. Yeah, but the biggest issue is the trickle up. Yes, that's it, what that's it, all it is. About. Uh, um, and, Another and, and, example. Yes. Taking the money from down below and putting it up above where it doesn't get into the real economy. And you're also adding deregulation of businesses by, by conservatives that lets them get away with the shenanigans. And that's what this next Chisler's Hall of Shame is about. I got this through the mail. Bill, see what I got? Looks looks like a serious... Uh, From the government. Yes, it looks like a government um, check or something. Check or something because it had the it had the perforated right. uh, the ends I had to tear off, you know, that were perforated all the way around. So by looking at it, anytime you see the part, the perforation sections where you have to peel the ends off to open it, it's usually from the government, and it looks like a government check. It's usually money from yeah. the government or something very important when you see a plain serious not too much information on, on the front except your address and then you have the perforations so here I thought it was something serious which you know you people at home would agree that it definitely looks that way lo and behold after I peel the perforations off and I open it up what do I see an advertisement from a Toyota dealer in my oh, area, oh. they're <laughs> are they going to give it a loan too? Uh, you uh, say they're going to give it a loan? I to mean, buy a uh, to yeah, Toyota of Hackensack. Who? Uh, says here, 278 River Street, Hackensack, oh, yeah, New Jersey. I know where it is. Toyota of Hackensack is now sending their uh, obnoxious uh, high-pressure sales crap in the form of a very serious looking government envelope with perforations going around it. So, <laughs> I, it, it, it kind of, it annoyed me that they have to stoop so low to get your attention by copying a government envelope. But they do, they're doing it. And uh, ever since the Republicans have control of Congress, I have noticed that companies have been getting away with more and more and more of these shenanigans and uh, it has to do with deregulation and uh, you know it's like uh, what I read let me see what I got here uh, Mr. the ugly turtle face senator from Kentucky Mitch McConnell said that uh, corp the concept of corporations not having the same rights as people is absurd. <laughs> well, you know what? You're absurd, and your face is absurd, and it, you could tell Mitch McConnell is definitely on the take by making a statement like this. He, you know, he's definitely in somebody's back pocket. Well, he also insinuated that the, uh, that the White House was involved with the IRS, uh, quote, scandal, unquote which turns out to be no scandal at all. Oh, but but they're always on the attack for anything well, when it comes to... Well, they wanted to make Barack Obama a one-term president. Yeah, they're, they're... That didn't work out. Their objective is simply to gain control of the United States. And, and whether it be frivolous, whether it be big scandal, whether it be nothing unproven, they will constantly attack the Obama administration, like a woodpecker on a tree, they will peck away, they will attack, and um, their objective is to get total control so they can uh, 
install their uh, wonderful corporate plutocracy, fascism, and uh, and pretty much give the working That's main already what we have the working mainstream masses pretty much given them next to nothing like chicken scratch, no benefits, no uh, less than minimum wage, no uh, no overtime, forty hour work week. Uh, well, they almost cut. Uh, uh, what was it, two billion dollars or so, or two hundred, two billion, I guess it was, from the food stamp program. Yeah, but the day. It was, I think we're going to read something. But on they it. don't give you much as it is. No kidding. <laughs> they want to cut it. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, the wonderful uh, governor of Texas, <laughs> Republican uh, Rick Duh. Pat the the Rick Perry. Um 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 um. um, 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 um I can't um, remember the other one. Uh, I can't recall. Yeah, Governor Rick Perry stated that uh, he really cares about the poor in Texas and the poorest in the state of Texas, but he's against equal pay for women, which is creating more poor in Texas. So, and the Medicaid. It, yeah. Oh, they. Oh, definitely. They don't want Medicaid. They don't want the. the Medicaid doesn't really pay for what you need. If you if you in need eye place. if you need eyeglasses, they just pay for basic thick lenses. They don't pay mm. for they don't pay for nothing extra. So if the optometrist recommends anti glare or uh, uh, high index or whatever, Medicaid won't pay for it. They won't pay. For, they won't pay for dental. So if you're a poor a poor schmuck. And and you really have gum disease or something, and you end up not having your teeth. So what? The government wants you to do what? Uh, eat baby food or something? The Republicans, rather, the conservatives. Right. The conservatives want you to eat baby food since they don't pay for dental. So and and to get the HMO extension, which is probably not the best health insurance in the world, you have to have minor children as a Medicaid recipient. Uh, if you're poor and you're single. Or I'm sorry, if you're poor without children, you don't get the HMO extension. And of course, many doctors don't want to take the Medicaid. Blah 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 blah. It goes on and on and on. So when Republicans make such a big deal about a poor person getting social services, they're really making a big deal out of a poor person getting some crumbs. Hey, Mr. Paul Ryan was out there the other day doing crumbs. the uh, doing the Confucius thing. Oh, he's Did a wise. You? Thinking it comes from the Bible. Hey, you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. You teach, teach him how to fish, and he'll eat forever. What if the river, or pond, or lake, or, or pond lake? is? What if it's owned by the, the king? What if it's private? What if it's what? what if there's no public land around around the waterways for you to fish, or the the, the waterways can be? Like you've told me many times. What? He said. He says about teaching him a poor a poor schmuck to fish. He'll eat for a lifetime. What if the waterways are? What happens when when something's very contaminated? You always just ah polluted. But that's you know that's that's something. In, else. in other words, what the they're point is by 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 by, <clears throat> by quoting this statement, it, it's like a quick generalization, like a quick fix with a generalized they want, statement. They want to, it's it's saying that the poor are lazy, etc, etc. Et like in Michelle Bachman was out also uh, touting the cuts in, in benefits, etc. With her, uh, I believe it's from Timothy, I'm not sure, I'd have to look it up in my notebook. Uh, the statement where, if you don't work, you don't eat. Oh, it's, oh, is it that? Is it? Is it intimidating? But that had nothing to do. That has nothing to do with what the chief's talking about. That that Paul said that basically, if you're not going to do the work of God, you're not going to. They see how they twist things around. Yes, exactly. Well, it, uh, the but it's all to make the poor lazy, and you shouldn't give them anything because then they'll be lazy and they won't work for the man. They won't work for the man for 32 cents an hour. Or what the people in Bangladesh are working for, whatever, 15 cents an hour, whatever it is. So, uh, gee, I wonder if the Republican Congress uh, uh, is taking a cut, too, along with the social services. 
No, they never in do. In pay, gee, they're, they're not taking a cut. Pay it's like when, or their great health insurance or their uh, pay, great pension. It's like better. when Chris Christie said, uh, you know, uh, we all, all you, not, he didn't say we all, you have to make some sacrifices. Eh, but not the it, rich. it's never him and his rich buddies or the politicians that are that are in office making great sacrifices. They just keep on giving themselves a raise. They're making <clears throat> trickle up a lot of money, man, and it's all part of trickle up. And they're against the social services because they want to shrink government down to nothing, and they want the country to be a corporate plutocracy and uh, 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 controlled by corporations of fascism. They want people, eventually they want to enslave the masses. And like I said in the past, I know... Eventually they want to kill 70 or 80 percent of us. The poor, Who yes. are sucking up their resources. The top 20 percent really would like to see the bottom 80 percent... Dead. Croak. Dead. Dead. Killed the dead. What's that thing? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. We are here to kill you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that we are here. I might as well do it now. Yeah, we are. Yes, yes. The it's ominous, the ominous voice. We are here to kill you. 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 Right. That's exactly what they want to do. And also, um, I also made statements in the past that where. Where would these corporations find their customers if people do not have the money to spend on their products? And Reverend Bill told me that the Republicans just do not think that far ahead. They don't, but they believe that they, you know, the world is their oyster. Like if the, they don't have a market here in the United States, they'll have markets across the world. Like the CEO of Nestle's, this scumbag demon hey. CEO, he is. I know, but you, he, hey, he wants to own the water. Which means he Let wants, it, you know? which, means, which means he wants to control human life on this planet as we know it. Uh -huh. If he wants to control the drinking water supply, he therefore wants to control the world. So he's like, uh, he's like a, a dictator of the past that wants world conquest, except he's his corporate CEO. But that's what it is. It's just the brand new colonialism. That's what in the old days, uh, United Fruit or whatever goes into a country, and uh, you know they 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 take over uh, whatever they want, need or whatever, mm -hmm. and the United States uh, military protects them. That's what that's all about. So they've come to believe that they're the ones that deserve this stuff, not not we the people. Yeah. I thought this was a democracy. That's what I thought. We the people are, it's just like with this Snowden thingy here going on here. Now, wait a second. They're gonna, they're, they're, he's facing espionage charges now. Could go into jail for 30 years. Wait a minute. We're the people. It's a democracy. We're supposed to know what the government is doing. Well, how are we gonna know that if the whistleblowers aren't protected? Yeah, if if I mean, what are we what are we leaving people in charge up there, such as the NSA, right. making these important decisions for us, and yet we're uninformed? Yeah, no way, Jose. If if there's nobody there to expose the forces of evil, how on earth would the the, the people in the world know about their dirty dealings? Exactly, they don't want us to know. That's what it's all about. But human nature never changes. The problem it? is, you see, yeah. they are in the position where they can make those decisions, not to inform us. Because they pay, they pay to off. spy on us. This, that. Because and the they thing. pay off the, the political leaders. It's right? simple. It's that's really that easy. That's the government they have made for us. And and when somebody is paid off, that's called political corruption, right? And then you have all these people, this, that government, the government, this, that, the other thing. No, it's not the government. It's the people running it. Don't get the idea. The system is fine if it worked properly. It's like Karl Marx is a socialism. It was, it was, it sounded beautiful when he first wrote it. 
until they got corrupted by these uh, greedy totalitarian uh, military yeah. dictators, you know, and now and then now they got it. Everything gets corrupted. Now that now they got to demonize. Uh, Karl Marx is uh, and, and socialism is demonized, just like liberals are demonized. What about what about God's economics versus <laughs> capitalism? Which is the devil's well, economics. You know, we don't have to go to socialism or yeah. communism or something. We have a great economic uh, standard set by the Bible. Uh, I thought that, like, you know, these right-wing conservative Republicans, Christians they call themselves, yet none of them have heard of God's economics, and they certainly don't ever juxtapose it to their beloved capitalism. Capitalism would work perfectly and be the most perfect... No, oh, I'm, I'm getting to the point. Well, we'll get to the point because you got to remember one thing about capitalism. It favors who? The people on top, the wealthy. The wealthy. The Those wealthy. who already no, I'm, have. I'm talking about... Okay. I'm talking about the form of capitalism sl slash democracy under a progressive liberal Yeah, but democracy and government. capitalism have nothing to do with each other. Okay. If, if the society in the United States accepts and recognizes that a good education, including college, and good health care for all is a right, not a privilege, and the rich pay the bulk of the taxes that they take on the tax burden, they pay their fair share in taxes, and the tax breaks go to the, the middle class, the little guy, totally... We old. already did that in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and half of the 70s. And if that if that all took place, then things would be hunky-dory, peachy keen, you know? Yeah, but uh, along came Lewis Powell and his stupid uh, statement for business. Business uh, took over the government. And that's what we have today. Well, fascism. Who started the, the, the trouble, really? Who was the culprit back then? There is no culprit. It, it was, was a, a series, a cabal. That's correct. A cabal. I correct. like that word. Even, even that word sounds sinister. A sin cabal. The word sounds sinister. We used to it? use that all the time on the radio. Cabal. Your Lion, friend. Lionel? No, the guy. Uh, Jay Diamond? No, the, no, he was a progressive. The other guy, the right wing nut. Get off my Rush? phone! Oh, Bob Grant. Bob Grant, oh, yes, a cabal. A cabal is like yeah. a, a, a bunch of sinister people that are in cahoots. Yeah, which together. is another funny word, cahoots. Cahootsies. Cahootsie? <laughs> All right, now for the uh, piece de resistance. This guy, just looking at him, gets under my skin. I hate him. I, 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 and, and there's good reason to hate him, but just looking at his douchebag face with his stupid haircut, hairdo, you just want to strangle him and punch him out. Bill Gates of Microsoft uh, just so happens to own 500,000 shares of Monsanto. But he said that now that his... Uh, his um, his goals have changed and his focus is like off of Microsoft and he's, he's, a, he's a very global man now. He says that he wants to do good in the world. Mm. So if somebody, if a, if a multi-billionaire, if that's what he is, wants to do good in the world, then why on earth does he have so much money invested in the wicked, evil, poison-producing company? and GMO company Monsanto. 500,000 shares. Interesting. Because these people don't recognize the contradiction that they live under. Yeah. Okay. First of all, if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken. Yeah. But Microsoft, I mean, uh, Bill Gates and his wife there with the their foundation. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're doing good in the United States. I know that they're trying to vaccine polio in Africa and, 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 and get Gardasil to every girl in the world and boy. 
dangerous vaccines, unnecessary but what vaccines. What are they doing good yeah. in the United States? I haven't heard, I haven't heard I don't anything. Know. Except the promote, promotion of uh, these toxic, unneeded vaccines in third world countries, fourth world, fifth world, whatever. Uh, but he, he wants to do so much good in the world, but he's, he's in league, obviously, with Monsanto, with the evil Monsanto, by owning 500,000 shares of Monsanto. I find it interesting, and just by looking at him, he looks evil. You know, he, he just, um, um, he's the one that, that said in front of a, 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 a huge crowd of college kids, that you know the real world when you graduate the real world the business world corporate doesn't care about what you like what you don't mm -hmm. like what your opinions are what your feelings are whether or not you find yourself they don't really care about you it's just 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 a number and uh, blah 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 and then you know it's about, remember. about the bottom line and he said it with such uh, glee you know like like um, well, he's just uh, he's just stating things as they are. You know. But the point of that is, we made that yeah. those things the but, way they but are. But he didn't he didn't put it down when he said it in front of the college students. No, of course not, because he was stating it that that's that's how it is. That I tell you what all the time, but you think you can fight against these forces all the time. But that's what is. That's what is right now. Your job. Now, how to fight against them? If that's what you want to do, the jobs, the jobs. In some way, you have to get the same power they have, and you have to, you know, buck them on some sort of uh, yeah uh, avenue that you're going to succeed. So on. all these people, your average American job. That's why your average American job, especially retail, pays crap e f even far less than the cost of living than ever before. Pays crap. The benefits are crap. Your uh, uh, close dear friend, and, and, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give her. I'll give. Uh, I'll be. I'll be a big, a big boy here, and uh, and. You gonna be generous? And I'll be generous and, and mention her name and say hi, uh, Esmeralda, Esmeralda Glutz mm -hmm. or is it Glutz? Glutz. Now be careful because she's ninety-five years old. You know. In reality, she don't look it. That's what they on Facebook. She has, 95. Is that to keep men away from her? To keep men from hitting on her? Well, she puts down 95 years old? I have no idea. Why 95? Why not like 105? Then she'll really keep men away from her. But anyway, she works in retail. And she said that uh, she made a statement that she runs around like over 90 miles an hour in the store. And I says, well, it sounds like your store is greatly understaffed. And she says, yeah, and also greatly underpaid. Um, she works for Payless Shoes. Uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame, shame on you, Payless Shoes. No, shame on you, retail industry. So my answer to her is, you know, this is nationwide. This is across the board. Yeah. Yes. All retail people that I speak to, unless they're... Um, uh, part of management and their their corporate ass kisses and they suck their their regionals dick you know I and I sometimes an upper management in retail would say oh I love my job yeah because you're you're on your knees all the time most would we love would they love their job more if it were their own business it's a good question as God's economics yeah. has it well retail every man his own land and his own vine. His Remember own that. Vine. It's very important considering yeah. it's a contradiction well, to how we do it. Today. I know for a fact that retail managers are also very much underpaid and overworked. And this, all the stores are understaffed because they want you to do the job of three or four people. Uh, they want you basically to be a slave. They don't compensate, hey. they don't compensate you for what you deserve. A huge culprit is the company that owns the Gap, which also owns uh, Banana Republic, I believe, and Old Navy. Hmm. They treat, they really treat their employees like garbage. Um, and there are other retail establishments uh, that do so also. It's just famous for that. And uh, well, it's because of the culture. 
The yeah. culture is that you have to go to them for a job and, and to survive. And they know, they know that the job market is worse than ever. 